Welcome to another episode of the Giant Take Podcast. 30 to 10. 30 to 10. 30 to 10. Giants lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but uh, this episode was going to be a recap episode, but we have a recap. We also have a firing to go over. Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, former offensive coordinator of the New York Giants, has been fired by what seems to be head coach Joe Judge, who is currently going through a press conference as we talk about this. If you are new to this podcast, hello, my name is Josh, and I am joined by my co-host Alex. We are here to talk to you about all Giants football. We come with Recap and preview episodes to every Giants football game. Sadly. And for this one specifically, uh, it was a hard watch. We played a better team. We lost to a better team. But there were also some poor stuff in there. Uh, And we will be going through all of it. As well as this news uh, of Jason Garrett and him being fired. uh, And how that impacts the team. But first, Alex, how are you? I'm doing all right. Um, well, I'm not doing great. The only reason I'm in a slightly better mood is because Chelsea's winning right now, which is we do another podcast talking blues on that, but not going to talk about that right now because we're in depressed moment. It's just not good enough. There's Jason Garrett issue. Obviously, he's been fired. I was saying to Josh earlier this morning, if he's not, or maybe it wasn't to Josh, maybe it was to Peter, but if he's not fired, by the time this episode starts, there's going to be a big problem. Luckily, he's fired by the time the episode starts. So, a little bit less angry, but still very angry. Because I know some Giants fans are celebrating like we're about to go to the Super Bowl at this point. But you do have to remember that this decision is made too late by about a year. Um, so, if you think about it that way, it's not great. And, uh, you know, he should have been gone before the season started. And even if not, he should have been gone within the first couple weeks. Um, And that's really the biggest issue. And it's not going to help anything now because our season is practically over. In terms of who's going to take over, it sounds like it's going to be Freddie Kitchens. But then who knows? We're getting these words from Joe, uh, from Joe. You know, he doesn't even deserve the full name anymore. Joe, uh, that he... He didn't really announce him as the OC, so who knows what who's going to be calling plays. He didn't rule out the possibility that he's going to call plays on offense, which is very scary. So imagine Jason Garrett even more watered down. I think that's what you're looking at when you see a Joe Judge offense. But it's just not good, and it, and it all start, it starts from the top with Mara getting too involved and not letting his GMs do what they need to do. Mr. Gettleman, Joe... And then obviously everyone underneath him. And then eventually at the very bottom is the players. And we're just here as fans on the sidelines. We're over here. There's this whole tower over here where they're all screwing shit up. And we're over here. And we can do nothing but talk. And it's very frustrating. But we'll still be here anyway. And we're still going to be Giants fans because we have no choice. We're, We're addicted. We're addicted to this team and we can't help ourselves. And it's a really bad problem. We all need to go to therapy, but there's no therapy for this. You just you just gotta you just gotta stick through it and hope one day it gets better. Peter's our friend, by the way, just for the clarification. Uh, an- yeah, sorry about that. I, I I was gonna clarify, but then I was like, yeah, let me just go with the more casual situation. He's a early throw out. If you are a heavy, heavy, big, huge. First listener of the Giant Take podcast probably was in the second or third or fourth episode of this podcast, so um, that's where that comes from. Listen, uh, if well, no, I was just going to say if you listen to those episodes, your judgment is questionable. But anyway, we'll continue. <laughs> yeah, here comes the start of my uh, two minute thing. Alex, give me the floor. The I thought you would be like the floor has been given, something like that. Just, just no, no. Well, well, you said give me the floor, and I just stopped and didn't. Well, give yeah, you but like talk. that. All right, continue. Okay, whatever. All right, continue. Just didn't work out. Okay. Yep. No, it didn't. I want to talk about the game. I, I was thinking of doing Jason Garrett second because that is what came out later, and we are here to technically do a recap. I know it's a uh, day late or two days late, whatever you want to call it. Game is on Monday night. We had school the next day. We're recording this after school. It sucks. 
School's a thing, all right? If I, again, I feel like I've said this on this podcast before. If I, if I had the option to not go to school, I would choose it 10 times out of 10, okay? But we're here. So let me talk about the game and what I saw. I saw that Daniel Jones is, once again, not helping this team. Uh, you know, the impact we've seen from Daniel Jones this season has been mid, has been meh, has been okay. Uh, it, there's been good, there's been bad. This is one of the bad. It was not his fault for the entirety of this game, except maybe four or five plays. The biggest one being the absolute god-awful interception. God-awful interception. We've seen some awful interceptions from Daniel Jones. This was a bad interception. Alex could back me up on that. Many Giants fans who watch the game could back me up on that. Awful interception by Daniel Jones. Throws it to a Buccaneer. Practically throws it to a Buccaneer. No tips like Tom Brady's interception that we were lucky to get. Two of our interceptions this season, I want to say, have been off of tip of helmets or hands. We were lucky enough to get one earlier in this game. Uh, but we live streamed through the first half and into the third quarter. But once it was time to go, it was time to go. And glad we we left when we did uh, because we got off that live stream. Alex, I'm going to go right now as quickly as possible so I don't miss any of this game. And Alex, I'm sure you were happy about that because immediately the drive right after we ended the live stream, Daniel Jones throws that interception. Buccaneers score another touchdown, I want to say, or the field goal to make it 27-10. And it just went downhill from there. The Giants were so bad in this game. The Buccaneers brought in Blaine Gabbert, their backup quarterback, to rest Tom Brady, who then practically went two for two with 11 yards, if you want to say that as well. Yes, they have a lot of op- options. Yes, they're a really great team. They are. I would say we are more outplayed than poor performance. It was a mix of both. Alex could say differently. He's shaking his head at me for everyone listening. Uh, I think we were more outplayed. Uh, we also did outplay ourselves. I think that's a big thing that we need to take away from this game. The offensive penalties were a tremendous issue. The false starts, the holding, whatever. Will Hernandez needs to clean this stuff up. Was going to use another word. I'm trying to keep it PG. Will Hernandez has to clean this stuff up. Nate Schulter, as always, has people completely running past him. Um... And and Daniel Jones really had no time. I know they have really good edge rushers. I know they have good blitzes. He had no time in this game. I do want to say on the defense, oh my God, this Giants defense. Why are we rushing three? We, we rushed three so much in this Patrick Grand zone. We blitzed maybe once or twice. Brady, did Brady get sacked in this game? Did Brady get sacked? In this? Alex, did Brady get sacked in this game? No. Tom Brady didn't get sacked once in this game. And didn't we? Didn't you say in the preview to this game that in order for the Giants' defense, and I agree with you, to win, that they would need to apply pressure? Yes, I did say that. On the defensive side of the ball, right? Yes, sadly. And what did they I do? Did and what did things. they do? Not that. Not that. The complete opposite. Drop back in zone and just had Brady complete check down after check down after check down to Gronk. To Godwin, to Evans, to Fournette, to Bernard, to Jones. Any check down or short pass you can think of, mix in with the long yards after catch. That's what the Buccaneers did, and that's how they won this football game. I'll get into the stats in a little bit because I do have some stuff, but I've been talking for a long time, so I do want to let Alex go. I have a list of grievances that I'm going to roll through. Uh, I wrote a list down this morning when I was mad. Started writing players down's name, players names down last night, and we have some issues. First of all, Will Hernandez, he's an embarrassment to this football team. He's you know he started the year okay. I was starting to give him some credit. Josh has been trashing him all along. I was trying to be nice, but nah, uh, uh. Will Hernandez, not it. He was trying to put people in chokeholds because he can't actually block. He needs to go. He's gone. No, no renewing his contract. That's for sure. Anyway. Uh, who else is next? Leonard Williams got the new contract. Seems to forget that he's also employed to play football and get pressure on the quarterback because he didn't seem to do that. Big problem. 
Uh, and it's just it's just not good enough from him or Dexter Lawrence on the inside, who was also very poor, I thought, yesterday. You know, Dexter Lawrence, he's 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 not quick enough, and that's a big problem. We see these athletic defensive tackles. We see DeForest Buckner. We see players like uh, Aaron Donald who can chase down the quarterback. And to be honest, even Tom Brady can outrun Dexter Lawrence, and it's kind of a problem. Um, so Dexter Lawrence, I love him, but... It's just he's not really your modern-day defensive tackle. Uh, Alex, just before you continue, I remember we said this on the live stream. I think we should repeat this on the podcast as well. The Giants' defensive line made Tom Brady look like he was a running quarterback, right? Like a run-first guy, like a Lamar. I thought it was Lamar Jackson. Right. But I mean, the comparison well, no. would be Lamar Jackson, but you know the run-first uh, quarterbacks that are able to scramble out of the pocket. Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, even their backup uh, in Baltimore. We saw it this weekend. Huntley is also a running quarterback as well. I know Tom Brady. He's I, I, I trust me. I know Tom Brady. Goat, uh, as I said in the live stream, Eli's son, right? We know that. Here's the deal, though. The guy knows how to step up in big moments. The guy knows how to avoid sacks. The guy knows how to step in the pocket. I get that. But he's not fast, and we made him look extremely fast apparently I, I i didn't know this until last night he had a 10 yard run on the giants and he pointed the hell out of that first down i don't know why elijah penny gets a taunting for literally pointing with two fingers uh for a first down but brady goes full on with his hands like goes crazy makes a windmill points to the first down and gets nothing i don't understand that brady we we know the jokes with the rest i don't need to make those jokes alex continue with your list all right, and next, it's just, it's another, it's, you know, I'm not one of those people, I, I see, you know, I was reading through Snacks' list, who was actually on the live stream for a few minutes last night, so if you want to go rewatch it, it's on the Twitter, Giant Take Pod, go check it out. Um, Great plug right there. But, you know, there's lots of people calling for Daniel Jones's head, and I wouldn't say, because, you know, I'm not one of those people who's, like, right after this game is overreacting to certain people, Right. Uh, the list I'm compiling, if you notice, are players who have had trouble all season, right? There, it's no person who's, it's not like, I, you notice I didn't put Andrew Thomas on the list. Yes, he caught the touchdown, but he didn't have the best game ever. You know, he had, a, he had a solid game, but he still made a couple of mistakes, right? I'm not pointing him out because he's been solid all season. Yeah. So there's, there's a difference between overreacting for the game and then this is just the last straw of many issues over the season. There's a difference, I think. I was just going to say, Alex, who was one of the highlights on my list for this game, Andrew Thomas, coming back from IR, getting the specified uh, the Andrew Thomas touchdown. Um, and we've seen the NFL memes. We've seen the Giants memes. We knew it immediately. <laughs> Andrew Thomas now has more touchdowns than Kenny Galladay and Saquon Barkley combined, right? Not Saquon. It's Tony, I think. Kadarius, Tony, and Kenny Galladay combined. Uh, that would be our first round pick from this last year's last year's 2020 NFL 2021 NFL draft, excuse me, uh, and that would be the man we paid four years and 72 million dollars uh, in that contract for uh, as well. And our left tackle uh, does have more touchdowns than both of them combined. That would mean that they do have a goose egg of zero for anyone who does not know math, which I would probably be slow here uh, as well in that case. I wasn't going to mention Kenny Galladay because it's not really his fault. It's the, it's the, it's the clapper. It's the clapper. And he's just terrible. And I hate the clapper so much. Thank God he's gone from this joke of a franchise. Mm. It's still a joke, but at least it's a little bit less of a joke when Jason the clapper Garrett is not here anymore. But Kenny Galladay, it's just unfortunate. It's just we're wasting talent. It's, it's where, you know, this guy on his day is one of the best receivers in the league. There's a reason we paid him the money, because he is a talented receiver. You may agree it was too. Mu you may disagree and say, "Hey, it's too much money." You may debate, "Oh, you know, it's a little bit too much money for the receiver himself." But I think everyone could agree that on his day, he is a very upper echelon receiver in the NFL. And the fact that we targeted him, how many times do you think we targeted him, Josh? Um, I mean, I I, I don't know how many times. Three, two. Two, two. I was. I, I didn't know if you two had that times. stat or not. I, I'm glad you did. Two, two times to Kenny Galladay. He caught one and then got a pass interference on the other. So he's pretty efficient in his targets here. 
We're throwing. Well, let's not throw it to him. No, let's not do that. We at least got a few targets into Kadarius Tony. But I don't understand. I I get. I'm not going to grieve totally over the offensive. You know the play calling because obviously Jason Garrett's gone. But still, we need to talk about what needs to be done to fix it. Right. What needs to be done is that. We need to set up, why are we not doing more screens with Kadarius Tony? You know, we always did those screens with Evan Ingram. Why Why don't we do some screens with Kadarius Tony? Get the ball in his hands quickly and see what he can do. Get Kenny, you know, you don't know. Maybe he gets five yards, get 10 yards. Maybe he gets negative two yards. Sometimes he does do that. Or he might get 80 yards and you have no idea, right? So it's just, it's worth taking the chance and seeing what we got with that guy. And and Nate Solder, I have him in all caps here on my list, actually. Nate Solder is a turnstile. He's like what you go through in the subway. He's like one of those broken turnstiles when you enter the subway in the city that you don't actually even have to put the card, the uh, the swipe your metro card, because it's just like it's open, it's broken. That's Nate Solder. You go right okay? through. That, you go right through. And it's just, it's just, it's just terrible. And I don't understand... Maybe Nate Solder is 10% better than Matt Parrott. Our season is over. If I don't see Matt Parrott starting by next week, I'm going to lose my shit. Because there's no point in not starting. Let's see what we have in the guy. Give him a chance. We see him in there, those jumbo packages, but like, why not other times just starting? Nate Solder, there's no one worse than Nate Solder. Like, I could stand there and do practically the same thing as Nate Solder. Will I get put on my ass too? Yes. But so does Nate Solder. So does it even matter? Like, my God, it's so frustrating. He's just there to stand there. But like, I, it's, it's just infuriating, this joke of a franchise. That's the end of my list there. Jason Garrett was on it too, but I got to delete that, so that's good. Giants had just over 200 yards in total offense, uh, in total yards of this game, 215 to be specific. I want to go to the stats uh, because I do think it's clear and it shows – how bad our defense is, but also how good Tampa is and their weapons. Uh, they had, let me just uh, get this open. They had three people who had over 50 yards receiving in this game. We first go down the list with Mike Evans, six receptions, 73 yards, a touchdown. Gronkowski, six receptions, 71 yards, no touchdowns. Chris Godwin, six receptions, 65 yards, a touchdown. Uh, then it goes down the list. Bournette was targeted a lot. I uh, was six times for 39 yards, but it just shows. And, and I would say the diversity of their playbook looked very good there as well. That shined Alex, you know, what's something that I, we didn't catch on. And I'm happy. I remembered missed tackles. This giant team, another thing here, they cannot tackle. They missed so many tackles in that game. A few of them were on Mike Evans. I know these are top tier guys in the NFL when it comes to receiving, but I mean, it was funny at, at that point how many times the Giants' uh, defense missed tackles. It was especially Mike, the Mike Evans one where it was like three guys over there. Again, we touched on that in the live stream. I, I don't mean to keep mentioning it, but we did. Uh, we talked about it at halftime, and it just continued from there in the second half. I mean, the the way we I, – I know we don't have the Blake Martinez coverage linebacker right anymore, but was it Darnay Holmes? Covering Rob Gronkowski for most of that game. I remember he had a holding call, right? A defensive holding, I want to say, against him or pass interference because he held Gronk because the guy is humongous and it's Darnay Holmes who's so tiny on him. That's why Gronk was getting open. But it just looked so easy. There was just no pressure on the, the on the D-line because we were sending three and because the guys that we were sending just weren't getting home on Tom Brady. That could also show how good this Bucks O-line is, but... I think it also just shows uh, how bad our defensive line is and, and our team in general. So defense played poorly. Yeah. Offense played poorly. Daniel Jones, I, I is he the guy? Is he not the guy? You know, right now he goes to the not the guy on the, on my meter, just like anyone else would think at this point. Every, every game he goes, this is the Daniel Jones meter, and it goes whoop, whoop, whoop. Like up and down voice crack there. That was I really like that bad. one. Everyone ignore that. But I won't. anyway, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know you won't. You, Josh is going to be putting the exact uh, time clip in the YouTube video uh, or the timestamp. Anyway, 
it, you know, going off of what you're talking about, the tackling has to be better. And we were playing too soft throughout the whole game. And that's really a big issue as well. And I know you mentioned that before, but it, it's a problem. We got to, I'm not going to even say we got to move on from this game because this game is indicative of everything that has happened this season. And we got to, we got to look at ourselves deep down and we got to figure out what the hell this season I don't want to say it's over, but it's over, right? I think, I mean, Josh, do you agree with me? Yeah, it's over. I do agree. Right? This season I also want to make sure I clarify that Jones had two interceptions, not just one. It was just the one that I'm thinking of that was awful. Sorry. I mean, they were both pretty bad, but yeah. That was pretty good. But yeah, it's not, it's just unfortunate. You know, what we're looking at now is we got to see who's who are the guys and who are not the guys. I, I think it should be pretty obvious at this point, but there are a few guys, right? Daniel Jones has a big six more weeks to go, right? Daniel Jones is the, the next six weeks will be indicative of whether he keeps his job next year or not. I want to, you know, the draft next year is not good for quarterbacks. So if we, if Daniel Jones is not the guy, I would be willing to do something more like either keep him for one more year before the next year's trade draft for class. Russell Wilson, Tra- <laughs> trade for a quarterback or pick up a, like, you know, get a quarterback who can be like a one year, like streamer, kind of like a Teddy Bridgewater, someone like that, that, that would be the solutions there. And then you just got to fix the, you got to fix the O line and you got to fix the edges edge in the defensive line. That's really the big issue. You know, secondary were pretty solid, and that's just the issues there that need to be fixed. And obviously, it just all needs to be, the tower needs to be knocked down, and it all needs to be reset. And I think that's going to be the big issue. And I was talking to this about to Josh earlier. I was texting him about it. How are we going to be able to keep Joe Judge if Dave Gettleman's fired? What, what GM in the world, besides Lewis Reddick, would want to come in here? What good GM here? That, get, that gets rid of him, most likely would want to come in here with the coach there, with their quarterback set. They're like being babysat by John Mara. Like no one wants that. Like no one wants to work for the New York Giants. Let's be honest. Like I would not take, I wouldn't even take the job if they offered it to me at this point. It's just, it's just terrible because you don't have any control. And I'm sure Jason Garrett was put in by management. I don't think, I think, I think judge is lying a bit, right? I think he knows more then he's letting on clearly, which he should, because he he can't just come out and be like, yeah, you know, John Mara, you know, watches me as cameras in my house to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm doing my work inside, but he's not going to say that. It's just, it's, it's just embarrassing. And we need to clean the house. It's either keep everyone or clean the house. You can't just do one or the other. Yeah. So we're on to post game. If you can tell, (laughs) Uh, we moved on from this pathetic performance of a game Uh, let's go to Joe Judge now in his press conference after the game basically uh, he mentioned uh, in the post game post game presser sorry I just repeated the same thing twice uh, that don't blame this game on the players blame it on the coaches write that in your articles or something like that he said write that down okay cool Uh, he threw Garrett under the bus it was pretty obvious so we kind of knew something was going to happen. Then a report came out that Garrett's going to be fired later in the week. That wasn't from huge sources, though, so it wasn't really something to think about. Then, uh, basically, it comes out, and by none other than everyone, everyone talks bad about him. We've had him on our podcast. He's been great. He's been super nice to us. I don't know what you're laughing hysterically about, Alex. Because I didn't realize you were going to bring it up. That's why. Oh, That's why I was laughing. oh my God. Of course I'm going to bring it up. Everyone talks bad about him. We even had a review that said, good, great job, guys, but never have him on again. Now everyone is per adding Mr. Pat Leonard. They're all adding him. They're saying sources say at Pat Leonard. I know everyone's hating it. I know Talking Giants hated when they had to say that, when they had to say per at Pat Leonard, when they said Jason Garrett got fired. But you heard it here first. From Pat Leonard of the NY Daily News, I would like to applaud him for that. First, getting it out that Jason Garrett was fired. Um, and then it went all over the place. Tom Pelissaro, uh, Jordan Ronan, Zach Rosenblatt was the second, I think, on the topic out of Giants media. 
but I just I just wanted to say that. But anyway, uh, you know, Jason Garrett, he's gone now. It looks to be, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that Freddie Kitchens will be taking over uh, on that front, and we're getting quotes from Joe Judge along the situation. How about this? I would like someone to ask, why is it that your offensive coordinator in the past two years is fired and not you as the head coach and the head of this awful franchise right now? But I know no one's going to be doing that. They'll lose their job. The Giants are ranked right now 23rd in the NFL in total offense and 25th in scoring offense. That's why Jason Garrett is gone. So what's the solution? Who needs to go? Alex, you have an answer to this because I definitely do, and that starts with the top. No, not the owner. No, not the GM, Dave Gettleman. It starts with Joe Judge. Sorry. I think the owner's not going to go. So as much as he should go, he's not going to go. So we're just going to have to live with that, right? John Mara is not selling. So it's going to have to be like that. John Mara, as much as he's cuckoo, he loves the team, so he's not going to sell it. So then it goes to Dave Gettleman. Dave Gettleman's drafted well. Here's the thing. I actually think the coaching is worse than the GMaging, if that makes any sense. The GM the the coaching is worse than the people who running the team in the, the general managing area. The general managing. Mm-hmm. The GMing. So I think personally That was sad to hear. Sorry, continue. Yeah, the GMing. I think personally I agree with you, Josh, that it would make more sense to get rid of all the coaching staff. If you had to do one or the other, I would get rid of all the coaching staff and keep Dave Gettleman. I know that's controversial because I know pretty much everyone else would say the other way around. But ideally, get rid of everyone, start over, pray that this team gets better soon. I would agree with you. Uh, And the two things I would like to mention that have come out so far uh, from this press conference, well, I think it ended already. But the two things that I just want to talk about, Joe Judge, obviously, for press reasons, has to have no blame on Jason Garrett, nothing but respect, basically. And he said it's not, quote, unquote, a blame game. It's not a blame game, guys. We don't blame headsets either, do we? We don't, we don't blame. We don't blame headsets, do we? No, no. No headset. Headsets were working fantastic, by the way. So thank you, Bose or Beats or whoever. It was Bose, I think. Whoever provided the headphones, Joe Judge was loving them. It was great. He only took one time out unnecessarily. Right. It was per. Actually, no, that that's not true. He took other timeouts, but it wasn't because of the headphones, okay? It was just because of his normal stupidity. Three minutes and 30 that's seconds stupidity. left in the first half. What do we do? Let's take a timeout, guys. That, that seems like a good idea. But anyway, uh, we will keep you updated with all the giant stuff going on, uh, you know, on Twitter and everywhere else. But we have one more thing to do here. It's going to be a happy Thanksgiving coming up in about, uh, well, depending on when you're listening right now, it's two days for us recording here Tuesday evening. So we're going to go through our Thanksgiving picks, uh, and then the episode will be out sometime, I would say Friday. We'll have to see. Uh, We'll we'll figure it out. Uh, But the episode will be out sometime later this week. It'll be after, obviously, the Thanksgiving games. That's why we're doing them now. Who wants to? What What are we doing, Alex? Because there's three, so we can't split it evenly. Well, like, I, I don't... all right, I will do the most important game for us Giants fans, which is currently the Bears and Lions, and then you could do the other two. I like so what Bears you did there. Lions, I faked everyone out. I like it. I like it. Bear Bears and Lions. Uh, we will. We obviously are both rooting for the Lions because we need that good draft pick because we want an edge rusher, an offensive lineman. That's very good. So hopefully the Lions win, but Josh and I both have the Bears winning despite Andy Dalton being at quarterback. Josh, you go with the other two. I'm not going to lie. These Thanksgiving games don't have me on the Thanksgiving spirit. Honestly, nothing really stands out to me. But the next one is going to be Cowboys Raiders. Yes, the Cowboys are going to win this game. The, the Cow- I mean, who else, right? Uh, it, it does it does very much suck to see your NFC East rival go and, and win these games. Bills, Saints is the last one. We both have the Bills. Boring Thanksgiving picks from the both of us having the same teams in all three games. Uh, but it do it is how it is sometimes. But yeah, we appreciate you listening, obviously, episode later this week. If I can somehow convince Alex uh, to do a YouTube. Yeah, we appreciate you listening, obviously, episode.
YouTube video, you know, maybe it'll happen. But even now, for everyone listening, literally I'm removing himself uh, from his little desk. But yes, please uh, subscribe to the podcast. Go follow us. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, The Giant Take Pod. Uh, and, Thank you, uh, everyone, for listening 10, to please. today's episode. And we'll see episode. everyone so watching this episode later Alex, this week take for the out. Eagles preview. Let's clip those wings, please. I don't care if we don't make the playoffs. Let's sweep the Eagles, please. Thank you for listening. See everyone later. Peace.